our message for today, we will be reading from the book of Galatians. And uh, if you study the book of Galatians, it's really a letter of Paul to the church in Galatia. And it's coming from a deep sense of frustration and passion. Passion for the gospel and frustration because there were false prophets who went to the church. Ang tawag po sa kanila, Judaizers. Uh, they came before the Vilmanians, the... Okay, yung mga nanay lang yung tumatawa, no? Sharonians. Before they came, the Judaizers went to the church in Galatia and uh, they were teaching false gospel. And so this uh, good-hearted people trying to follow Jesus, now all of a sudden there is a mixed teaching that is driving them away from their pure devotion to Christ. Now all of a sudden, from living a life of faith and pure devotion, here they are going back to dead rituals, dead traditions, dead religion, trying to earn the favor of God. And Paul was so furious. He was, uh, he was frustrated. He was passionate about it. And so he wrote a letter to the church in Galatia to reinforce the gospel message. And so uh, Galatians chapter 4, uh, beginning in verse 4 to 7, is really uh, a part of that letter helping the, the Christians during that time in the church in Galatia to be reminded of what the gospel they received is all about. And I'm, I hope as we go back into this, that the Word of God will also reinforce the gospel into our hearts. And the, the gospel will just enrich even our faith today as we celebrate Christmas. So uh, I'd like us to turn our Bible to Galatians chapter 4, if you have your Bible with you. And as you're turning, I'd like us to pray right now. Lord, we thank you for bringing us here today. Uh, we thank you, Lord God, for the, the reason that we can celebrate. Regardless of where we are in life, what we have or what we don't have, we thank you that we have all the reason to rejoice. We have all the reason to celebrate. So Lord, I pray God, we focus us once again, our hearts, our minds, our devotion to you. And I pray, Lord God, that as we receive your word, your word will just bring so much peace and joy and, and just a heart of gratitude in each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, uh, just four verses for us today, and I'd like us to, uh, to really break it down verse by verse and try to unpack the the truth of God's word. In verse 4, it says, But when the fullness of time had come, when the fullness of time had come, and I'd like to pause on verse 4 because when I read that, the fullness of time, can we all say fullness of time? time. Talking about the birth of Jesus Christ and Christmas, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, when the fullness of time had come, Christmas for me, is a reminder that God has a plan and His plan is right on schedule. So whether you have uh, prayers that are yet to be answered or maybe promises that are yet to be fulfilled or maybe there are dreams and visions that are yet to come to pass, I think this Christmas we need to have that assurance that God has a plan and His plan is right on schedule. Uh, God's plan for you is never late. He is not in a hurry, but He's never late. And whatever it is that God has put in our hearts, whether that's a vision, a dream, a burden, uh, a promise that He wants us to claim, we are exactly where God wants us to be. It's a reminder for us. And when God says it's time, it's time. Whether you think you're ready or not, whether the enemy would try his best to stop the plans of God for your life, but when God says it's time, it's time. And no demons, no evil plans, uh, no emergency, no accident will be able to stop you from stepping into God's destiny for your life. So uh, as we celebrate Christmas, we have that confidence. You know, uh, when I went to Qatar, as, as many of you know, I preached to our, in our church there, I stayed there for one week. And after po nung retreat, tsaka nung uh, mga church meetings, we had a day to really go around. And I was looking for this camera that my daughter was praying for for almost a year na. Pero sinasabi ko sa kanya, sige, pag-pray natin, you save up for it. Siguro mga 4,000 pesos lang yun, ano? <laughs> Pero for some reason, we, well, and then when I went to, to Qatar, I was looking for it and I saw a, 
uh, a sale. So I said, finally, mas mura pa. So I, I bought it. And then I, I told Jessica, I sent a message to my nine-year-old daughter. Sabi ko, when I come home, I have a surprise for you. Sabi niya, what, what? Okay, secret. So torture ng konti, ano? <laughs> Tapos pagdating ko, sinundun niya ako sa airport, na nasa uh, sasakyan na kami, sabi niya, what's your surprise, daddy? Sabi ko, guess what? The camera you'd been praying for, I have it with me. It's my surprise for you for your birthday. Sabi niya, ah, hysteria. Talagang ano na siya. Nags- sabi ko, pero... We, we have to wait till we get home because it's in the luggage. Sobrang lalim ng luggage, okay? Siniksi ko talaga doon ng mabuti, so you have to wait. So, while we are on our way going home, she's, she, she kept on screaming and thanking, Ah, Dad! Ah! Gagaganan siya talaga. She's celebrating, she's thanking me the whole time because she knew the, the, the camera was already there. It's sure, it's with me. So on her way, while even though she can, she's not yet, uh, she don't have it yet in her hands and not yet seeing it with her own eyes, yet there is so much assurance in her heart. That's why she can celebrate already on her way. I know where, I think you know where I'm co- going with this. Because even now that we don't yet really see with our own eyes the promises of God, yet because Jesus, because Jesus has come already, Emmanuel, God with us, because we know His salvation is sure and His promises are sure, today we can already celebrate. Today we can already rejoice. Today we can already thank God and praise Him. We don't wait for the promises to come to pass before we worship Him. Even while in our waiting moment, we can already worship Him. That's why this Christmas, we, could, we can be people of worship. We can be people full of thanksgiving. How many of you here, you are full of thanksgiving and full of gratitude before God today? There is so much joy already. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, But when the fullness of time had come, and verse 5, God sent forth His Son, born of woman, vo- born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law. Um, how many of you here, you've watched the movie Aquaman? Napanood na po niya, okay? Ilan sa inyo dito alam nyo hindi kasalanan manood ng movie? Okay. <laughs> it's a great movie. I, uh, I watch it with my daughter and my three-year-old son, surprisingly, kahit two hours yung movie, ano, pero yung, yung three-year-old ko talagang first time, hindi umalis. He's hooked to watching this superhero. Uh, well, the movie uh, overall is really good. There's uh, some power lines here and there. And there's one quote that I think is really relevant to what we're talking about. And this is from the red hair girl. Forgot her name. M- Mera. And she was talking to Aquaman because he's refusing to go back to Atlantis and, and be the king of his people. He's, a, he's part human and he's part super, uh, supernatural, uh, king of the underwater world. And so he's refusing to go back. He said, these are my people, the people of the surface. So he's refusing to go back. And the girl was convincing her. And here's what she said. You think you're unworthy to lead because you're of two different worlds. But that is exactly why you are worthy. You represent both worlds and both people. That's why here in verse 5, I said that because the Bible says, God sent forth His Son, born of woman. It's important for us to understand that Jesus was 100% God and 100% man. That's important for Him to be born of a woman. To come and dwell among us so He can represent us and He can purchase us, redeem us from our sins. And that's what Jesus did in order for us to be redeemed. You know, the word redeem is, uh, in the original text, it means to set free by paying a price. And during that time, redeem is something that they understand because any man can purchase a slave during the Roman, uh, Roman times when they are still ruling and reigning. According to some theologians, there are approximately 6,000 slaves in the empire. And any man can purchase a slave, can redeem a, a slave, either to become his slave or either to set free this slave. He can do whatever he likes, but he will pay a price. 
for a slave to either become his slave or for a slave to be set free. And the Bible says, Jesus redeemed us from our sins. We are slave by our sins, yet Jesus paid the price so we can be redeemed. Not to make our lives miserable, not to enslave us, not to make us uh, carry a heavy load of burden. No, the reason Jesus redeemed us is so we can be set free. And how many of you here, you're enjoying your freedom today? We're enjoying our freedom today. Set us free from sin and death, from shame and guilt. I'm not sure with your journey of faith, but before I became a Christian, I'm loaded with shame. I can't even go inside a church building because I feel so unworthy because of my past, because of my mistakes, because of my failures. I don't have the face and I don't have the the courage to stand before God and even say a short prayer. I don't know your own journey, but I'm loaded with sin, with shame and guilt. But praise God, Jesus redeemed me and Jesus has set me free. That's why today I can stand before people. That's why today I can stand before God, not because of my own righteousness, but because of the gift of righteousness by Jesus. I'm standing here not because I'm holy, but because Jesus made me holy. That's why I can stand. I can, I'm no longer a slave of my past. I'm no longer a slave of my mistakes and my failures. My history will not determine my destiny. Jesus determines my destiny. Because Jesus already redeemed me. And that's the power of Jesus' redemption for us. Not only that, but to set us free from whatever is holding us back from living the life God wants us to live. What is holding you back from living the life God wants you to live? For some people, that's addiction. For some people, that's unforgiveness. For some people, that's pride. For some people, that's battle with lust and greed. For some people, that that would be uh, discouragement. I don't know what's holding you back, but the good news is Jesus came to set you free. Jesus wants us to be free to become who He wants us to be and live the life God wants us to live. That's why you are not the same person anymore. If you're a Christian today and you're walking with Jesus, you know you can testify you are not the same person anymore. How many of you can testify today, I am not the same person anymore? You may not be where you need to be, but praise God, you are not where you used to be. Amen? Malayo na. Malami pang dapat gawin si Lord sa buhay mo, pero comparing one year ago, six months ago, two years ago, you are not the same person anymore. Can you please turn to the person sitting next to you, tell that person, I'm not the same person anymore. Parang di convinced yung katabi nyo, ano? <laughs> Sabi mo, hindi lang halata. But I'm not the same person anymore. Verse 5 and 6. You're not the same person anymore. That's why I want to encourage you. The the flaws you see in your life, the struggle that you see in your life is not an indicator that God's power is not working in your life. The fact that there is a struggle only means that God is at work in your life. Because if there is no struggle, it means God is not at work inside of you. But the tension and the struggle only shows that God's power is at work within you. So keep on fighting and keep on believing. Keep on getting back up. Every time you fall, the Bible says, seven times a righteous man may fail. But guess what? Seven times he will rise up again. Righteousness is not about perfection. Righteousness is about getting up again and trusting the grace of God to carry us till he is, till to to completion. Amen. And verse 5 and and verse 6, so that we might receive Adoption as sons. That's the purpose. Bakit ba may Christmas? Why did Jesus come to redeem us from our sins? So we can attend church every Sunday? That's not the only reason. But for some Christians, that, that's where Christianity ends. Pag naging Christian ako, I just go show up to church every Sunday. You're, we're missing out the purpose of why Jesus redeemed us from our sins. 
Because the Bible says, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Adoption. Everyone say adoption. To be honest with you, the first time I read this, I was not able to understand and, and appreciate this gift of adoption because in our culture, especially in Philippine culture, adoption is not popular. Most of the time, there is a negative connotation. So pag nanonood tayo ng mga movies, tapos nalaman nung character doon na ampun siya, normally, what's the reaction? Nagwawala siya. Nagagalit siya. Bakit di nyo sinabi? Mga ganun. So, kaya may stigma talaga pag, may, pag adoption tayo, ha? Jesus redeemed me from my sins so that I can be adopted? How can I be thankful about adoption? But that's because our culture painted a negative image of adoption. And we don't really understand the significance, the value of adoption. That's why it's refreshing to hear a testimony from somebody who's adopted. A person who grew up in that situation, in a family, knowing that she's not really born physically by, the, by her mom, but she's really adopted. You know, there's this article by Ray, from Rachel, uh, from Rohe about Rachel Escusar and her testimony talking about the joy of being adopted twice. She is the daughter of one of our pastors, Pastor June Escusar and Gigi Escusar. She's now 23 years, old, 23 years old and she's sharing her testimony as an adopted child. I will, I just want to read word for word some of the portions of this testimony because it's so powerful and I hope that we, it will help us grasp the idea when Jesus said we're adopted into his family. First part, she said, there has never been a time in my life when I was ashamed of being adopted. My parents secured my identity as their daughter but primarily they first showed me to be secure in my identity as a child of God. Interesting because in the article, she said growing up, her parents are trying to be sensitive of her so they are not very vocal, but she's very vocal to her classmates. <laughs> telling everybody, I'm adopted. <laughs> and she's never been ashamed because she said, uh, they secured me of my identity as their daughter, but first, they secured me of my identity as a child of God. Next one, I realized from the very start, God already had a purpose for me. I could have been aborted or it could have been ended somewhere else. I saw God's faithfulness. Even if I was an outcome of a mistake, I myself am not a mistake. And that's a good perspective because sometimes, you know, we, we, there's a negative reaction to adoption. But for her, she saw only reason to be grateful. She said, Thank God somebody adopted me and treated me as their own. And this is the la uh, part that I like. She said, my parents were the first to share the good news to me. And I believed it because I saw so much evidence of it, not just in the story of Jesus, but because I saw a reflection of it in them too. Parents, we are representative of Jesus to our children. So it's important that we don't just teach to them about Jesus, but we model, by the grace of God, the life of Jesus. They lived out the gospel when they lived, loved me and adopted me, understanding all the challenges they both had to go through just to claim me as their own. It is a constant reminder of what God did to make a way for Him to claim us as His sons and daughters. Because of that, I can proudly and securely say that I have been adopted twice, once on earth, and forever in Jesus. Seeing God's radical love in her family, Rachel tells us how her family loved her unconditionally, even if she wasn't their own flesh and blood. The same way that God loves her, even if she wasn't a direct descendant of God, He adopted her out of sin into His royal family. And last part, my mom told me one time that on the day that they took me home, I would cry so much. Once a child is given up, they just know they've been left there and was abandoned. The first time that she carried me, I smiled. I smiled for the first time and I just knew I was home. 
if we only understand what it took for God to have us, the sacrifice that Jesus had to go through in order to have you and me, we would appreciate the redemption, the sacrifice that He gave for us. That we would understand that we are loved, that we are precious, that we are valued. We are not rejected. We are not unwanted. We are not abandoned. We have a God who loved us so much that He's willing to take us in, in spite of our sin, and go the extra mile so we can call Him our Father and He can call us His sons and daughters. How many of you are thankful for God's adoption and bringing us into His family? You know, the implication of that is we can enjoy an intimate relationship with Jesus. We can be changed by our relationship with Him. We don't need to prove ourselves to others because we already know we are valued. You know, life is not about who can have the most likes and who can be famous. We don't have to prove people that we are precious because Jesus once and for all determined our value when He gave His life on the cross for us. And last thing as we end, in verse 7, so you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. You know, as we celebrate Christmas, we're reminded of who we are in Christ. I, and I like that. In the message translation, it says, with complete access to the inheritance. We have a complete access. I was reminded of the story of the prodigal son when he asked for his inheritance from his dad. In his mind, the life, the dream life is to be out of the supervision of my parents. So sabi niya sa tatay niya, hindi na kita mahintay mamatay, tay. give me my inheritance. The Bible says, he squandered it in wild living. And when life became hard and became miserable, when he lost all the money and, and famine hits the country, he was left with a miserable life. And at that moment of pain, uh, he came back to his senses and said, Mabuti pa yung mga servant ng tatay ko, mabuti kinakain nila. So sabi niya, here's what I'm going to do. I don't know what my dad will tell me. I don't know what he would do to me. Siguro papipiliin niya ako kung dignidad. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know, but I don't know what will happen to me. But I will go to my dad. Sorry for that. I will go to my dad and sabi niya, ito yung linya niya, please treat me as one of your servants. Wag mo na ako itratong anak. Pero kahit na itratong mo na lang akong slave, sa dami ng ginawa akong kasalanan, sa mga winaldas ko na kayamanan mo, I don't deserve anything good from you anymore. Just treat me as one of your servant, please. Sabi ng tatay niya, no, you're not coming back as a servant, you're coming back as my son. And you're going to have complete access again to the inheritance. Religion teaches us that we have to work for God's favor. I have to earn God's favor. The gospel teaches us that we will receive God's favor and God's blessing, not because we deserve it, but because He is gracious to us. That's the good news of the gospel for us. No matter how far you've been, no matter how bad you'd become, the moment you go back to God, you will be accepted as a son. And you will be given complete inherit access to the inheritance, the richness of God's grace, the richness of God's mercy, the richness of God's goodness and wisdom and love for us. We can access it every day of our lives. That's why the Bible says, for we have a high priest a representative who can identify with our weakness. Who himself was tempted in every way, yet was without sin. He knows what it means to be discouraged. He knows what it means for us to go through pressure. He knows what it means for us to be tempted. He can understand our weakness, our struggle with our emotion. And the Bible says, we have somebody who can sympathize with us. That's why we can come to His throne of grace so that we can receive help in time of needs. Amen.
Amen. We have an access to the rich inheritance of our Father in heaven, made possible but by our Savior and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's just praise God today. Let's just clap our hands. That's the good news. And as we celebrate Christmas, I hope, you know, we're thankful for the blessings. We're thankful for the gift of family. But really what we are thankful about is the salvation we receive from Christ. Amen.